Hello and welcome back to Daily Drives. And today we have the 2020 Audi Q7 with the S-Line package. And we're gonna be finding out what's new for this refresh from Audi from an exterior standpoint, then go into the interior. And finally, Casper's gonna take it out for a drive. So just like it's German rivals, Audi really kind of depends on how you spec them out. You can get a base version that just looks kind of bleh, and then you can get something like this with the black metallic Orca paint and the black appearance package as well as the S-Line package. I mean, just look at it. It's menacing. You do get this sportier bumper, a blacked out grill and real intakes on the sides as well as the matrix headlights, which are absolutely beautiful to look at, especially when you use the turn signals and they kind of sequentially pass through and on top of that I mean it's an Audi so they've really paid attention to the details especially in these headlights when you get up close and personal those kind of things really make a difference and speaking of details this car comes with the optional 22 inch wheels which look absolutely fantastic and really make this car stand out but uh, later on we'll be finding out if they hurt the ride quality when Casper takes it on the road. So while Audi was refreshing the exterior, they also had a look at the engine, the three liter V6. No longer is it supercharged, it's now turbocharged with a little bit more power and torque at 340 horsepower and 500 newton meters. This engine as well is a mild hybrid. It's a 48 volt system that will engage start stop earlier. So when you approach a light, the engine will turn off before you stop as well as when it goes green, well, it will engage faster and smoother. And that whole package gives a zero to hundred kilometer time of 5.7 seconds. It might not sound like much, but this car is very heavy. It weighs over five thousand pounds and if you're looking for speed well Audi has you covered because in 2020 they introduced the SQ7 with a twin turbo V8 propelling it to hundred and four point eight seconds Now, when it comes to the refresh of the Q7, the biggest changes happened in the interior. It's a very futuristic new look for Audi. And I love Audi interiors. Honestly, I love the knobs, the switches, the way they respond to your touch and how they feel like. But unfortunately in this one, there's not that many of them. Have a look at these seats. They're beautiful perforated leather in okapi brown. Just another nod to Audi Bahrain's choice when it comes to specs of this car. So before we get to the updated MMI system, I wanna have a look at the virtual cockpit. It has also been updated with this refresh and looks a lot clearer as well as a lot easier to use. You have a couple of functions that are quite interesting. You can see your standard stuff like the consumption and memory and all of that, but you can also spread the screen to see a full-blown view of the navigation maps while driving. So you don't have to glance at the MMI system. You can keep your eyes on the road and see where you're going. So the MMI now comes with two screens and the top screen gives you a lot of versatility when it comes to setting up the car. Sometimes I believe a bit too much. You can set your air suspension settings manually. For example, you want to raise the car or not, as well as you can put it into various driving modes that will do that for you. Next over, you have the car details, which shows you various angles you might be taking off-road and what's the maximum you can do. It will assist you if you go off-roading, but I suspect that most users won't be in this particular SUV. You also have a quirky function called efficiency assist, and that will help you determine whether or not the functions you are using in the car are taken away from your battery, which in the end might lower your fuel consumption. So this particular Q7 comes with heated and cooled seats. They're only exclusive for the front, however, where you can turn on heated and cooled seats at the same time. So if you're indecisive like my wife, that might be something interesting for you. As well as from the MMI system, you can control whether or not you want the seat to cool or heat the bottom part or the back part more than the other one and also exclusively. And you can do that for each seat individually as well. 
And just using the new MMI, it is very responsive. They've updated the computing power of it, as well as whenever you click on something, there's a nice feedback and also a little clicking noise that you get from the older iPods that you would swivel around. But diving further into the MMI system, you can control the ambient lighting inside, controlling the contour color as well as the surface color, and you can individualize that or use one of the many presets that Audi has given you. And if you would like to know, there are 30 colors to choose from. Furthermore, you have the parking aid, which will help you while parking, as well as your driver assist. You have basically two levels of driver assist. You have the maximum, which will impede the most on your driving style, but is there to help you from having an accident. And then you have the basic mode, which gives you a little bit more leeway. And then finally, you can individualize what would you like to be turned on or off when it comes to the safety settings of the car. And just like with Porsche, you do get a free button on the steering wheel, which you can appoint a specific function depending on what you need to do on the fly and what you use the most. This car does come with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay and if you are an Apple user this also has the wireless Apple CarPlay so you do not have to physically connect your phone to the car. Now when it comes to customization this car has a lot and lot of settings and I could go on for an extra 30 minutes talking about all of them so I'm going to talk about the one thing that I truly like and picked out from that bucket of individualization which is the brightness and display option and where you can customize the way the virtual cockpit looks so it can have the standard Audi look it could have the classic Audi look and finally this sporty Audi look which looks very weird but sporty now, just when you think Audi is done with the LCD screens, well, with the refresh, they've actually added one more, which is the climate control center. I probably named that myself. You do have some functionality on the top, which is your start stop and your hill descent assist and everything, but primarily it's used for controlling the climate. Now, the problem is with this is that when you're driving, you can't physically feel what you are doing because it's a touch screen and that can prove to be quite difficult to change the temperature in the car while driving. And below that screen, you do have some shortcuts just to make it easier on you. So you have your drive select mode, you have the 360 camera, you also have the driving aids as well as a physical knob to control the volume of the stereo. Now the 360 camera is absolutely ridiculous in this car in terms of the quality and picture you get and what you can do with it. For example, with the overhead view, you can swipe the screen and look around the car physically and it represents it with a 3D model. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, it's not on the same color, but uh, we'll forgive them for that. As well as you can go into the individual cameras themselves and look, for example, what's in front of you. And when you turn your wheel, the camera in the front will actually turn or the software might be doing that. So you can see where you're going and what's most important. Furthermore, you can also look what's happening at the sides as well as in the back, you also have the swiveling camera function. And finally, you can see what's happening to the front wheels left and right as well as the back wheel so if you get into a tight space it's very hard to curb your fabulous 22 inch wheels and get into a minor accident now apart from the volume knob you get in the middle if you need your audi knob fix because they do the best knobs in the business you have one to control the heated side mirrors which is nice to fiddle around with and get rid of that itch and next to the mirror controls you can control the child lock safety system and you can control it per side so you don't have to lock an adult from one side because you have a child on the other so when it comes to storage space in the audi q7 well there's not much of it i mean yes you do have a storage pocket here but when you open it you realize that's where your wireless charging is your usb auxiliaries and sd card and your sim card if you want to connect the car to wi-fi the glove box is dampened and felted so that's a nice touch it gives you like a little premium luxury of what audi has to offer but the storage pockets on the sign are just adequate i'd like them to be a bit more bulkier in the center console because of the lcd screen you don't have that big cup holder so if you like big drinks like me well don't think they will fit or they might fit barely and finally i think audi forgot completely about a sunglasses case holder up here because it's not there. I don't know where it is. 
Now, thanks to Audi's newer platform that they're using for this car, yes, it is a bit lower and has less presence, but it's so much easier to get into, especially for elderly people. But once you're finally here, you notice that the LCD screen and all of this infotainment and everything continues to the back. So you do have your touch screen controls for the climate with the vents on top, as well as these flimsier ones on the side. And this particular car comes with the Audi entertainment system. Down there, you have your 12 volt charging facilities. But if you're looking for a USB outlet, you'll find them here, as well as HDMI to connect your computer games. But one weird thing about these screens is that when you try to turn them off, you have three options, power off, silent mode, and airplane mode. Apparently, Audi thinks you're flying. But when it comes to sitting back here, I mean, it is very comfortable. You can recline your seats if you wanted to, as well as slide them around for reasons I will explain later on in this video, as well as you want the utmost comfort, you do have a armrest here, which is quite difficult to get out because it's very solid and German. And inside this armrest, you have the smallest cup holders I've ever seen. I'm not really sure what could fit in there, but you do have them, so I'm not complaining. So one of the biggest advantages of buying a Q7 is that it comes as standard with three rows of seats. Now, to get to the back seat is quite difficult, especially for someone my size. You first need to move one of the seats or all the seats forward, as I showed you earlier, then pop this down and then finally pull it up. And that's how you get in the back. It's not very comfortable. I would like that to be automatic, just like how it is easy to automatically raise and lower the third row seats. And here lies one of the bigger problems of the Q7, because it is the smallest in its segment. It kind of rivals with the X7 and the GLS from Mercedes and BMW in terms of price, but in size it's smaller. And especially when you close the third row or you raise it up, you don't really have much to work with. But if you buy this car and you are interested, you can fold out the mineral to carry your bigger items when you need it. But close the boot down and you are greeted by one of the best looking rear ends of both those competitors I've mentioned. And with the refresh, it does get this chrome line piece that separates and just cleans up the rear. Now the S line also has another cute trick up its sleeve with the exhaust. Well, they might look real, but they're fake, just like the non S line version. So you can get two different types of fake tips with your Q7. But that's it for me. And now I hand you over to my trusty co-host Casper, who will be driving this thing and telling you more about how it feels on a day to day basis. Well, I have driven this car for the last couple of days, so I feel more than qualified to tell you what it's been like. Usually when you see these big premium SUVs being driven around, it's very much almost a statement of the driver or the person driving it of their success, which isn't a bad thing. It's just very much so in your face, which this car actually isn't. I mean, granted, it has these big 22 inch wheels and a very prominent front end, so to speak, which if you do see that barreling up behind you in your rear view mirror, your best bet is to move out of the way. As Osama mentioned, this car is powered by the three liter TFSI engine, producing around 340 horsepower and propelling you to 100 in 5.7 seconds. Now, that does sound fairly quick for a big SUV but it just doesn't actually feel very quick. And I don't know if the numbers are lying, but it just, I mean, I can see I'm going that speed. It just doesn't feel like I'm going that speed. And that's pretty much down to the suspension setup that I have it currently in because I'm currently driving in comfort mode. So everything is just a little bit softer and a little bit more forgiving. And once the engine quiets down, you just on your basic day-to-day -day driving, it is as smooth as butter. And that's pretty much all you want from a car like this because the people who will buy this car will buy this car for the fact that it's a relaxing driving experience, which it is, and a comfortable driving experience. The seats in this car are incredibly comfortable. They hold you really nicely. I also have the seating vents on, which is obviously very nice. And also with the GCC spec cars, what you also have to imagine is that they 
increase the power of the air conditioning in this region. So when it comes to other countries, the air conditioning doesn't work as good as ours does. Audi's got this digital gauge cluster set up in multiple vehicles, but it just works. It allows you to be facing the road at all times, which is something I really like because it just doesn't distract you. Put your navigation up in the middle, you've got your speedometer left and right. It's perfect for what you need. The infotainment screen is pretty nice to use. I mean, it's definitely a little bit updated. It's a little bit intrusive when it comes to certain parts, but overall, it gives you a very, very good overview of whatever application you want to be using. The one thing which I find a little bit of a drawback is the following. It's the air conditioning controls. Now, I understand that they've made it up to date with what's currently, let's be honest, in the market. I just don't really like it because they have made it digital, which means when you're driving and you want to change your air conditioning mode or you want to change temperature and so on, you have to second guess where the buttons are. It just doesn't do the job right. If you have conventional buttons, you can kind of blindly feel what you're doing. Granted, it's got its own faults and whatever. It does look amazing, especially with this piano black dashboard. But that leaves you with two problems, which is number one, if you're driving at a certain angle and the sun is directly above you, it does shine right in there and shoots back at you. And secondly, is because it's piano black, it is very hard to keep clean. And I know Audi does provide you a small little rag to make sure it's as clean and crystal clear as possible. But in this car, I don't have that. So I've had to rely on my own trusty little purple cloth to make sure it's exactly up. There you go. That's more like it. That can be a little bit of a faff every now and then. Now, the one thing I have to do now is sort of compile my thoughts to you and tell you what I would think about when considering this car. First of all, it is great value for money. If you think about the fact that it shares components and some major parts with cars like the Bentley Bentayga or the Lamborghini Urus, you are buying a lot of car for the money. Secondly is I like the tech. I really do. I don't think it's great when it comes to being user friendly, but once everything is dialed in and I imagine once you get used to this, it will grow on you and you will somehow just figure everything out. The third point is power. I mean, I mentioned briefly before this car does have a 340 horsepower engine. Despite being very comfortable, I wish it just had a mode of S. Now for that, we are in luck because they are releasing the SQ7 that's gonna have around 500 horsepower, which I think is gonna be a very big rival to some major players in the game. And that's, I think, the one I look forward to the most. And that, I think, personally would be the one I'd buy. But would I recommend this car to someone else? 100%. I think if they want a sleek alternative to a wagon or a very big SUV, I think this is the perfect median in which to sit in when it comes to car size. We are very grateful for Audi Bahrain to have given us their new 2020 Q7. And I do look forward to testing some more versions and I cannot wait for the S Q7. But for now, thank you so much for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it. Comment down below and let us know what you think of the new facelifted Q7. And don't forget to like, and of course, subscribe with the little bell notifications on. It does really help the channel and we appreciate you guys very much. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.